Okay, so this is a, I'm gonna to try to show you that what the central limit theorem tells us about sample mean. So it, the big picture is as long as you get a sufficiently large enough sample, the central limit theorem says if I have n is bigger than 30, or at least 30, I'll have, an, if I take and plot all those um, um, sample proportion or sample means, and they'll, it'll form a normal distribution with the mean as the same as the population mean and a standard deviation using that formula. Okay, so this applet, so to show you this and try to illustrate this, this applet uh, works pretty well. A uh, couple of concerns I have about it. It'll only let us go to sample size at 25. So it's really not quite big enough for the central limit theorem to hold, but it works really closely. So uh, they start this applet off using a normal curve. Um, I'm gonna make that, that wouldn't be too exciting to say, oh, the distribution of sample means will be normal because I start with the normal population. So um, here's a right skewed distribution. We're gonna have it select sample a sample of five, calculate the mean, plot it. Then it's gonna calculate a sample of 25, find the mean, plot it. And I'll have it do, I'll have it do a couple of rounds just so you can see. So there's five, calculated the mean and graphed it, plotted it. And it's doing a sample of 25. Plotted the mean, captured the mean, plotted. Notice that the, notice that the, here's the mean of the population. Notice it's 9.31. And the sample size of 25 had a much different a sample average. The sample size of 25 was pretty, pretty close. That was just luck of the draw. Let's, let's have it draw another set of five and then a set of 25. And then we'll, so that one's quite a bit lower, less than the population average. Uh, the sample size at 25, um, that was just about the same. Again, that's just luck of the draw. Um, what if I have a plot five samples? Okay, a lot of variation, not so much variation with the sample size at 25. The other thing I want you to notice, here's the population mean, 9.31. The samples of size five had an average average of 5.8. 86, whereas the samples of 25 had an average average of 6.43. Still um, lower than the population mean. What if we have a sample, 10,000 samples? All right, so what I want you to notice is notice now, the, the, so this is, this is the average of all those averages, the averages of all those sample means. For the size of five, we had an average 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 of 9.32 compared that to the population mean of 9.31 really close look at the samples of size 25 it's about the same average now so that's not that's not exciting that wouldn't be that wouldn't be anything that would you know it's kind of cool but um and it's useful to have that it works this way as you'll see in when we study chapter seven in confidence intervals but notice how this data is spread. So I've told, I've said the distribution of sample means is normal. It has a mean that's about the same as the population mean. Now the standard deviations are where these going to uh, these going to be different. So what uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, let's see. Let me get my board working here. What I'd like you to think about. Let me get the annotation going. I'm going to get my writing board working here. I think it's going to work. Is it working now? There it is. All right. So the, from the textbook, we learned that um, this, the standard error, I don't know if they've called it yet that yet, but here's the, this is the Standard DV, actually, let me not use S. Let's use, let's use that population standard deviation symbol. So this is the standard deviation for all the X bars, and that's dependent on the sample size. So for this one, I'm going to take the population standard deviation of 6.95. I'm going to divide it by the square root of 5, because that's our sample size. And if I do that, I, you don't need me to, you don't need to see this. I'll just do this off screen. So 6.95 divided by the square root of five. My calculator is telling me it should be three point, about 3.1. Now this is theory. 
what's the actual data show us? Darn close. Okay. So how about with a sample size of 25? Um, so I'm going to take this to find that standard deviation for all the X bars of size 25. We'll take that population standard deviation of 6.95 and divide it by the square root of 25. So that's going to be uh, 6.95 divided by 5, right? Square root of 25. So, so 1.39 I'm getting in theory. And the data shows it's the standard deviation of 1.41. So what it did is it, it found the standard deviation for all the X bars that they plotted, right? All those samples of size 25 of the, what is that, 10,007 samples. It found the standard deviation of those. And that's what it, it came up to be. And theory says it's supposed to be 1.39. Pretty darn close. One reason it's off is because we, we don't have a, a size sample of, of, uh, of uh, 30. You know? So the central limit theorem doesn't quite hold. But it's cl darn close, as you can see. So the population, the shape of the population doesn't come into play for the uh, sampling distribution. So sampling distributions act differently than the population. That's what I want you to get out of this video. And this is for the central limit theorem. This is for sample means uh, that central, that uh, the uh, normal approximation, the binomial distribution, while it's related, isn't exactly the same. So make sure you keep those straight. Okay, so hopefully this helps.